Hello and welcome to the Creative Corner, a place where you get to understand the authors, get inside their head, inside their hearts, and the reason why they decided to publish their book. And joining me as usual is The Flash. G'day brother. Good morning, how's it going? Pretty good mate, pretty good. Tell another, me something new, what have you been up to? Oh, it's another rainy day in sunny Queensland. I moved to the state because I heard it never rains, Flash. Well, you definitely heard wrong. Because <laughs> <laughs> it has done nothing but rain. It has been an interesting summer, but today we're going to be talking to an author who has just published his book. It's called Redesigning Conversations. There it is there. His pre-sale went off. It's going off on Amazon at the moment. His audiobook's coming out. Hello, Bill Ash. G'day, Ocean. Morning, Hello, Jason. How you <laughs> or Flash and Superman, sorry. Flash and Superman. <laughs> and, and what do we call Mr. Orange Man? Orange, uh, man. orange man is fine. Orange See, man. I've just learned it's the most hated colour. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's find out a bit about you, mate. Who is Bill? Who is Bill Ash? Well, I guess um, I'm a work in progress. If you, um, you know, as I, I relay in the book, a CV would say I'm a, a lawyer of many years, a corporate leader. I left that um, about eight years ago and moved into coaching. Um, and along the way, I did a, a Master of Counselling and um, Graduate Diploma in Ontological Coaching, which uh, is relevant for the book in terms of um, prompting me to get into that. I'm also uh, live in Brisbane. I've lived here for over 30 years with Margie Brownash, my partner, and on our age, we raise, raise four children. Wow. Yeah. And you heard about us through another one of our most uh, longest standing authors, Tom Sudolka. Yes. And he also was a lawyer. Yes. Yeah, and I find this very, very unique. You and Tom do not come across as lawyers at all. You come across as jesters. <laughs> as jesters? As jesters. You're oh. comedic, <laughs> fun to be around, always yes, with uh, a smile on your faces. I love it. It's true, actually. That's, yeah. a, that's a pretty powerful observation. Yeah, look, I'll take that as a huge compliment. It is. I, I think. Uh, you know, is, is okay, I'll have to keep going back to the book, but you know, part of um, relationship is humour is great, jesting is great, and uh, yes, great quality. Thank you. You're welcome, mate. So tell Never us. been called that before. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we found out that orange is, is the most hated colour in the world, yep. and we found out that uh, ex lawyers are more like jesters than lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> what else will we find out? In stop! Stop! <laughs> So tell us a little bit more about the book. Um, you used a really big word just before that I didn't quite catch um, about... On, onto, ontological. Ontological, yeah. So no, I think that's the only big word I use in the book. Um, it's, it's just your way of being, really. Okay. And uh, I guess the, the seed was planted for the book when I did my Master of Counselling. You know, a lawyer, corporate guy doing this Master of Counselling and not counselling. I did it while I was still in corporate life. And, you know, most of what's obvious is what we forget. And that told me that everything is about conversation. Yep. And, and relationships. And that just stuck there. And, you know, in the last year, we were forced to, well, we're encouraged to publish an article. And um, as I relay in the book, I'd become a member of the Taos Institute and Harley Nandis there, a global leader in communication, uh, suggested I do the article in her, um, publication and it just left there germ you know I, I started writing but it was more more a memoir it's my stories of relationships and then it was the ontological coaching um, graduate diploma that gave me I don't, I don't want to use the word structure but it gave me a language a really simple language and that's really when I started um, writing uh, furiously is that the right word yeah, yeah. yes <laughs> with um, with and at times furious um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so that 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 that's probably the story of the book yeah there's uh, the the person you just mentioned Harlan Harlan Harley Anderson, Anderson, Harley yeah. Anderson and she's put an endorsement on the back of the book which is absolutely stellar um, says a lot about your wisdom the advice you're offering practical tips uh, that you've learned on your life's journey and to all to improve conversations and relationship skills so when we look at it and there's two others and, the, and a great one on the front cover as well and I'm sure there's more within the book uh, when we're looking at who this is targeted towards, who the, who's the target market, don't say everyone, Bill. 
I know, and, and your marketing guru, Joshua Clifton, kept on saying, it's not everyone. <laughs> I heard about that. But you also have a value of break the rules. I, we do, we do. <laughs> so, um, but um, I think uh, Chris Pye, who um, is a relationship coach in, in Brisbane, he summed it up. It, it's really anyone that wants to be uh, or improve their relationship. Mm. And it's as simple as that. And, you know, I was, I, was, um, I think Josh kind of forced me to categorize a bit. And I think that it's, it's a good self-coaching book. So, you know, I, I think it can, can be targeted at coaches, teachers, and of course, um, leaders and parents. Mm, I definitely feel that, that if you are in a position, whether it's at work or um, like even in sporting, if you're yeah. leading teams, if you're leading a group of people, that your book is something that would obviously be of great professional development for them as well. You know, I think that you'd get a lot out of it to see how you could incorporate that in your team management, yeah? Oh, absolutely. Mm. And, and you know, if I had to give two categories, it's, it's leaders and parents, but I also think we're all leaders. Mm. So, you know, we can step up in the moment, and in the book, there are skills there to step up in the moment, mm. if like you like. That. What I really like is that, <coughs> um, especially with this, you know, the situation we found ourselves in the last couple of years with COVID and that sort of lack in um, human connection, like physical sort of space connection, we're all online, on Zooms. I really like this book seems to be sort of come at the right time. Everyone's sort of coming out of their cocoons, you know, coming out of hibernation um, and probably learning how to connect and converse with people again. So um, I've sort of found the content quite I guess on point for that regard, you know, people trying to remember how to have a conversation yeah. um, and, and sort of, you know, as you said, how to be leaders again because we've all been stuck in our own little little places, our little shells. Aside from, um, or, or maybe not aside, but including the awesome reviews that you've got on the cover, um, what sort of feedback have you had from your target audience? Um, on the cover or the book? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's go with the cover as well. Yeah, let's go with the cover. <laughs> just because it's a topic. What sort of feedback have you had let's on the cover? Let's just stick to form, not substance. <laughs> there we go, Jester. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I have to say, uh, I'm, I'm really proud of the uh, response. It's, Good. You know, going back to um, what I'm not meant to say, it's for everyone. Um, uh, it really is the, the, the range of people that have got something out of it. And can I just f follow up on COVID? Yes. And what has been astounding in terms of um, the people that step forward to um, write endorsements has been people I've never met except through social media, through LinkedIn. They're, all over, they're all over the world. That's yeah. A, that's fantastic. And the conversations I've had through that has been astounding. And I think social media, you know, it's the best and worst. Mm. I think social media for people um, is fantastic, and especially, as I mentioned in the book, for people, um, well, let's just use the word minorities, or people that think they are alone in the world, and they can strike up conversations with people in their milieu, and it's just fantastic. Mm. That's really, really good. Yeah. What exactly do we want the book to achieve? What's, what's <coughs> the mission here, Bill? What are we setting out to do over the next six months, 12 months, for three years, however long it takes? Just really inspire conversations. Um, if someone, if just one person reads the book or aspects of the, or some sections of the book, and then that prompts them to have a conversation with themselves, with their loved ones, with their team members, um, and uh, you know, they can go into work and say, look, I just read this, what do you reckon? And it could totally be different to what any view I expressed. I'm not trying to express too many, but it's hard for a lawyer not to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but just growing conversations and, and and the other thing is, um, I think one of the main things for all of us, and I'm still discovering myself, um, and I don't think that's a new age thing, most of what we do is, is, is prompted by our known, our assumptions, our prejudices, and if it just, someone realises that, oh, that's, is that opinion I have useful still? Does it fit the circumstances? Just take education, I was educated in this way. Is that still useful for my children? Mm, mm. Why am I insisting on that? Oh, that's because my parents insisted on that. Mm. You know, just those little internal, external conversations. I will, less is more, eh? I'll stop there. <laughs> well, I mean, you're looking at that teaching thing. I, yeah. I, I, um, I really lost faith in the education system when I was bringing my kids up. And I remember 
like they three of them said to me that they wanted to leave school at uh, at fifth form, which is I don't know what that is here when you do Grade your 10? yeah when you're doing your exams. That'd be ten or eleven. Yeah, 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 I think. And so every all, all my peers with well they didn't have kids my age at that time, but the other parents just saw that as the go-to, mm. and I, I didn't know. Eh? I saw my my children being unhappy, and I thought, man, if you, at the end of the day you want to follow your dreams and you want to give it a crack, I'll give you one year of living for free and then you'll be paying. And they've, they've all gone through and done what they wanted to do. And yeah. I mean, I think a lot of that had to do with actually, yeah, reshaping how I perceived things as a, as a parent to not follow that norm. It wasn't necessary. I'm not here to bag the education system, but I was following on your point about how to restructure how you're looking at something. Yeah, well, you actually raise a, a really um, interesting point there. I do focus a bit on the education in a broad sense in, in the book, but also um, I tell a lot of personal stories in the mm. book as a way of prompting ideas in other people, and one of them is the journey of one of our children who um, did leave school before it was finished, and just like you, you must finish school, you mm. know, and all this, and the advice we were given, oh, you know, and um, a great. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's, if you're there to support always there um yeah it's fabulous yes yeah, so we're not endorsing you telling your kids to drop out of school but you know at the same time no but what i <laughs> what i find really interesting is that like um bill you you've brought up this really important point about having the conversation with yourself you know which is what ocean sort of said as well you know redesigning the conversations that you're having with yourself yeah, yeah. um about your prejudices and and how you are approaching things in the world. And I think that's, um, that's really important for all of us to sort of take that, that moment of that self-check. So given the self-check, you, you said right at the beginning that um, you, you might have been a little bit furious when writing the book. Tell us about the writing process. You know, I once, I once went to a, a, a talk by a futurist and he asked a question like that and he said, oh, that was five minutes ago, I'm now onto something else. <laughs> <laughs> I think pass. I think, <laughs> pass yeah. No, furious. Look, I just, um, you know, I, I've learned through the writing process, I, I guess like anything else, that, you know, if you want to get something done, sometimes furious, you know, you've got to really get into it. Yep. And... Um, and again, take another aspect of furious. Sometimes you have your ups and downs with your moods and emotions, and sometimes you do get furious about this, that, or the other. I mean, perhaps a great example, a, a potential fury. Um, one of the, um, you know, <clears throat> one of the things I've learned and I was told time and time again, um, you must have an editor. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I, I regard myself as a pretty good writer. I mean, lawyers have to be good writers. Um, <laughs> And I, I, I remember um, Sarah um, telling me, I'm going to send you the comments of the editor. You know, it's more or less, are you sitting down? You, know, you may need a glass of wine or something. <laughs> and I got it. And yes, it was a furious. I, I, I don't know. I don't think I was furious. I, th I thought whatever it was, but it was fabulous. Um, I think I accepted every one of the suggestions. And I think, well, what, 30,000 words got lost? My darlings, those beautiful <laughs> things that I had that were so brilliant. But it wasn't, the book's not about me, it was about the audience. So they went, you I know. I found something in, in, in your acknowledgements <laughs> that I'm just going to read out about that specific process because, yeah. you know, often, you know, they're in the acknowledgements, myself, Flash, the team, we do get um, acknowledged there, which is wonderful. And you certainly have done that with us. But this one in particular, a shout out to Sarah Kate Hill, publishing coordinator, Christy Martin, lead editor and my structural editor, for bringing me down to earth and encouraging five weeks of joy as I restructured my book and threw out my many darlings. <laughs> and then Chloe, who challenged your language for some fundamental concepts, prompting me to redesign my discussion of those concepts. Yeah. So, I mean, you've, you've really embraced that, you know, you've embraced that editorial process because it is a challenge and it, 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 you are precious to those words on the page mm. you know, and those, that moment you spend writing uh, I, I remember where I was, what I was doing, what time of the day it was when I was writing my last book. I remember every part of it. So yeah, you do get a bit precious when someone goes in there and starts slashing with a, with a red pen. What about that publishing process then? What about the, that whole journey, working with the team and bringing that book to life? I mean, how do you find that? Um, well, the publishing process, the only experience I've had is, is with you guys. Um, I think the first thing about the publishing process was what you said when I, I first met you. 
Um, you're a writer, not a publisher. <laughs> so I, I think, uh, you know, it takes a village to do a book. Mm. And I think in life we, we need to know where our skills are not and where they are. And sometimes you want to learn those skills, but, you know, I have other roles in life. So mm. I think the publisher does that. Uh, I think, like anything, pro um, publishing is very much process oriented. Yep. Um, but I, th I found, I, I very much believe, and I emphasize this in the book, that everything, whether it's business, family, or you and me sitting here, it's all, again, about conversation. And publishing, to me, is project management. And a project manager once said to me, and he was a leading project manager, project management, um, there are three principles, communication, communication and communication and uh, and so it generates conversations about that and I found um, uh, uh, ORP Ocean Reed Publishing just excellent at that process some things I didn't need to know some things I needed to know and just me and someone need to know something else so it's just having those conversations about what I need to know what I don't need to know and the other thing and I'd like to think this is the same for all publishers. As I say in the book, um, you know, when I came out meeting you, I, I, I said to Tom, is he for real? And, no, <laughs> and, I'm a figment and, of your imagination. And Tom, who exudes values, I've known Tom since my teens, he said, Ocean's very value driven and his team is. And that was enough. And I found that, yeah, you guys want to make a buck from my book or anyone else's book. But I really felt that um, it was kind of all about me, that you, you're there making me the best author I can be and you know Jason the best book that can be so I feel I'm very proud of the book and I feel awesome. it's been a partnership mm. you know with with the publisher sure we've had our you know discussions you know but that's what you do that's actually part of the process too that's exactly right mm. so um, on that I was I, I had a meeting on Friday with <coughs> uh, a, an older couple who'd um, come up from New South Wales and I met them at a coffee shop mm. and like You'd remember this. Five, six years ago, we weren't here. We were doing this out of our homes. And when I'd have a meeting with a new author, I'd go to a coffee shop. And it'd been a while since I did that. And I'm, after I was leaving, and, and this guy was like in his 70s, he was deaf. And, and a lot of those hearing losses happened because of the industry he worked in. He had hearing aids, and I, I actually had to speak very loudly, um, which I probably should have found a better location for them. Because everybody else knew what you're talking about in the cafe. And very unusual for you to talk loudly. Well, I'm, I'm known to be quite a quiet fellow yeah, there, yeah, Bill. Yeah, yeah. Um, but my point is, is that like when I was sitting there discussing what their book was about and what they were trying to achieve, you know, the emotional connection that I made in that moment, I, I kind of went back six years and gone and taken the office out of it and gone, what, 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 why am I connecting with these people? I'm not his age, worked his journey, worked his journey or walked your journey, what am I connecting with? And it is all about that open conversation that you're having mm. with people at the very beginning of such a vulnerable process. Like you call them your darlings, those words on the mm. page. Mm. And when you pass over that manuscript to, let's be real, you didn't really know us. You, do, you didn't know- oh, not at all. No, and I mean, you actually had to ring Tom up and like you said, to say, is this guy for real? Um, there's a lot of trust that goes into this process. That's a good word to use, yeah. Yeah, a lot of trust. Mm -hmm. And that's something that from forever I've had, and definitely with me and Flash working together, we've always expressed that to the authors of how important it is that they, they trust us. Mm -hmm. Because it, it goes back the same way. I mean, we trust you. Mm -hmm. oh, you give us our, your manuscript, hell yeah. We're going to definitely trust you. Um, sorry. That's all right. No, I got uh, carried away. We were just <coughs> carried away in, in, the, in the monologue. <laughs> the manuscript is Did now. I, not a I think I noticed a little. I'll let that pass. <laughs> <laughs> Manuscript's now a book. The book's now out there doing its thing. Yeah. Um, helping people to redesign their conversations. What's next for Bill and the book? Uh, well, there's a there's certainly another book in me. I, I've. I've really enjoyed this. this we didn't process. scare you off too much. No, 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 no. Well, <laughs> I assume, <laughs> a couple of times. <laughs> um, no, it, not at all. It's 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 been a good process, and I'm at a stage in life. I mean, I think one of the questions you ask, 
and you have some fabulous values there and ask authors some really fabulous but what I love they're all value driven mm. and one of them is you know what's your legacy mm. and as Alan Sealer says in the forward there and Alan Sealer is a global leader in this kind of stuff um, you know if it's just one person you touch it's worth it and I'm at an age where I can do that and if that's my legacy um, so I, there's another book that's so common, you know, and it's also a very grounded approach to take, you know, if, if my book can, can inspire and change one person for the better, then job done. Yeah. And you know the funny thing about that, Bill? That person who makes that biggest change, you'll never know. Yep. But you have that intention when you're out there promoting and marketing. Mm. It's really interesting you raise that because, you know, we're all human and on one level I want to know, but another level you've got to, <clears throat> you know, you take that bit of humanity into you and say, no. Nah, no, it's not about me, so I don't need to know. And you, well, you, you raise a really interesting thing. Tr tr trust me, as an author myself, you, you definitely can settle with the fact you don't need to know. Um, well, I've said this before in one of our interviews, and um, when I released my last book, a lady sent me a f had bought it. I don't know who it was, where she came from, but she sent me an email saying, "Really loved your book. Really inspired me." And it was a photo of her sitting in the bath reading it with candles all around. So you know, there's some <laughs> things you just don't need to know. Deadpool starts cracking up behind the camera there. So while we move on to humour, um, we always have these questions we ask you guys because, like, for me doing an author interview, um, why I felt these were so such a good idea is that um, the the viewer can get inside the head and the heart of the author, right? And like, especially since uh, the new millennium's kicked in and the way that we are communicating is changing. And like Flash was saying before, coming out of the back of COVID and this being a prime opportunity for it, um, I want people to, to meet you guys on camera and go, okay, well, I get who he is. I know why he's written the book. I can see how he found that journey of bringing it to life. But tell me more, let's, you know, so what's your spirit animal? <laughs> I'll, I'll get to my uh, non-jester aspect. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not sure I have one because I, mm. I think certainly my um, background and who I am and, you know, um, my culture, I'm, I'm not sure I have a spirit animal, but I certainly have animals I, um, what does it relate to, if you like? I mean, living on acreage, um, we, we see the wallaby. Okay. And... If you, actually, if you take COVID, I love the koala wallaby, and if you take the koala during COVID, the koala was there sleeping away, you know, <laughs> trying to stay healthy. Well, unfortunately, um, it's a bit of an issue today, but the wallaby is, I, I find the wallaby fascinating. It's, it's graceful, um, it's just there, then it bounces off, but it then also comes down to the ground and it's so grounded. So, you know, I'll call it something else, not a spirit animal, but, um, Perhaps the wallaby is. Well, I think those qualities yeah. you've mentioned are qualities that you you definitely show. That you yeah. definitely got. Yep, you bounce around a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do say in the book that old phrase, "Feedback is a gift." So I'll take that as a compliment. Everything or not. I say, <laughs> Bill, is a compliment. Brother. It's, it's always really interesting, like asking these questions <clears throat> because they, you know, they are for a bit of a joke. They are for a bit of a jest. Sure, but it actually reveals mm. so much about yeah. you know the people that we're talking to um, and it's like the, the sort of things that you don't really get you, you might have to have a couple of hours of conversation to sort of get to that level yeah. that, that deepness but the the humor sort of dis disarms and then you find something that it's I, I always love these questions so the next silly question we have for you um, obviously that we have a bit of a theme going around the the team about yeah. superheroes um, which, which, which superhero do you relate to the most and why? Well, again... <laughs> um, Is there a super wallaby or something? Yeah, a, su a super wallaby, but, you know, I, I think... Captain Kangaroo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, superhero, it's, it's interesting. Um, perhaps a, I'm going to, you know, like a... Like a good politician, I'll frame the question how I want it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bounce around there, Bill. Let's yeah, no, no. There's, there's the lawyer coming out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, who would I like to have dinner with? How's that? And okay. he's kind of a, a superhero. And, you know, mm. if I was just going to go off the um, top of my head, uh, Margaret Mead, an anthropologist who I um, uh, mentioned in the book. You, oh, no, normally you're asked for three, aren't you? Okay, so let me try another. 
Um, I'm going to do risk with any people in the US. Um, uh, um, oh, I've got a complete mental block. Jimmy Carter. Okay. The president? Yes. Right. Now, people may have all sorts of issues with him as president, but I liked his values and I liked his, and who he, who he was after the presidency. And the third one, um, oh, um, uh, Julia Gillard. Again, for one of the reasons there is post-Prime Ministership, she has, in my view, um, done so much good. Mm. Wow. You okay. know, in, in terms of raising the awareness for and by women. And um, I, that's a huge box for me, a tick. And same with Jimmy Carter, that's why. Ask me tomorrow and I'll say three different people probably, but, you know. <laughs> no, it's good. So yeah. you've gone for, for real life. Super, um, you know, heroes. superheroes or whatever, whatever term we use. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, those we hold in reverence. Well, Bill, <coughs> I want to thank you so much for joining us today to talk about your book, to talk about you and the journey ahead. And for everybody else out there that would like to get a copy, there is the links below. As I mentioned at the start of this audio, or interview, the audio book is almost out. So keep an eye on that too. So we'll yeah. see you guys next time on The Creative Corner.